Alright guys, so in the last video we talked about the purpose of the air tank and why we have to have tanks in our laboratory for the TOC instrument to work. But keep in mind, it is an air tank, it is not an O2 tank, and we described why, right? So if you didn't quite get that, go back and take those notes and listen to me again, because I guarantee you that will be a question on an assignment or a test like a final. So make sure that you understand why we've ordered air tanks and not O2 tanks. So in this video, I told you that we are going to focus on the auto sampler, okay? Or the auto injector, some people call it, but it's really the same kind of thing. It's a place that I can load up my samples and allow the machine to inject them one by one without me actually being there. So the auto uh, injector that we have on the instrument, again, looks very similar to this middle piece here. Uh, this middle piece, uh, this is ordered specifically for Shimatsu. So if I'm not using a Shimatsu TOC, I probably cannot use an auto sampler from a different manufacturer. They really are made for the same company and they, once hooked up, will recognize each other and it will talk to the software. I really don't want to mix any kind of brands here. I'm not saying that it can't be done, but these instruments are made specifically for the auto samplers that come from the same company. Uh, and as long as I kind of stay consistent, I'm going to have a much better operating machine and I will have less kinks and less glitches to worry about a little bit later on. So here's a diagram of the auto sampler. And the auto sampler's purpose is to automate the samples. So that way I do not have to stand in front of this instrument for hours at a time injecting sample after sample after sample. I can load them up, I can tell the machine how many that I have, and I can tell the instrument the location of those samples, and the instrument will take over from that point, and it will do basically a lab tech's job as far as injecting goes. So, I can devote my time to something else, to some other method, to some other test in the lab, and become more productive. The auto sampler that we have in our laboratory is going to hold around 68 samples at once. So I can load them all up, I can load up to 68, and after 68, that is what I would call maybe another round on far as the auto sampler. I don't really want to call it a batch. And the reason that I don't want to use the word batch is because batches are really determined and defined by the laboratory. And sometimes a batch will represent 10 samples maybe. Well, this auto sampler can hold 68. So the auto sampler could actually hold multiple batches as far as that's how the laboratory has defined it, okay? So be careful, don't use the word batch. 68 vials is not the batch. The batch is defined by the lab. Traditionally, it's anywhere between 10 to 20 samples depending on the method that you are trying to follow, whether it's from the USP or whether it's from the EPA or whether it's from the USDA, it doesn't really matter, but that batch will be defined a little bit in more detail in that particular method. So 68 vials at once is going to be an auto sampler tray, okay? In this tray, you will have samples, you will also have standards, and we'll talk about the purpose of that much later. And you'll also have the QC checks. And of course, the QC checks uh, is going to be for the laboratory to double check you. So they know what these concentrations are supposed to be. They give them to you as samples. You have no clue that they're actually quality control samples sometimes. And you will run those with the rest of your samples and standards. And you will analyze them just like another sample and report those numbers back. And hopefully, when they get reported back, the QC department will check them out and say, yes, you're good to go. Uh, the model number of auto sampler or auto injector that we have is the ASIL. And this goes to my TOCL instrument. 
So ASI is going to be the abbreviation for the model of the auto injector that we have. The vials that this thing will take for us, what we normally use, are 40 mils in volume. So these are a traditional 40 mil vial that's used for other pieces of equipment as well, not just TOC. And we typically like to use amber ones just to make sure that none of those organics get destroyed over time. Uh, however, you can also get them clear. And if you are going to be running samples immediately after you get them, then you don't really need to focus on amber ones. Uh, amber ones are typically used for storage for a little bit longer, maybe overnight or one to two days. You want to make sure that the sample does not decompose the volatiles uh, don't really destruct on themselves or any of the organics uh, get destroyed over time. And sometimes light energy will allow that to happen. So amber prevents the light energy from hitting the sample and going in. All right. So 40 mil sample vials. That is what we order. That is what we use most of the time on this auto injector. And the auto injector here is around $9,000. So the funny story is that we first started off with just the instrument and we had this for a handful of years. So all of our students went in and they had to manually inject on this instrument one after another, after another, after another. It was a madhouse. People always fought over the instrument. There was always a line to try to get on the instrument to get their samples completed. And then a handful of years later, we ordered the auto in our sampler to go onto the TOC instrument. So now we are fully automated as far as TOC goes. But that was a $9,000 investment for us. And that $9,000 was just really the base price. So what I mean by that is that we also had to have someone to come in, install it, download it onto our software and everything, uh, check it, quality check it, make sure it's all included, make sure it's working, make sure it's talking. Uh, and that's typically done by a representative from Shimatsu. So uh, with that, uh, we forked in a little bit of extra money just to make sure that this system worked the way that it's supposed to work. Uh, and now that it's in our lab and now that it is running and now that it's been kind of verified, then we do all of the maintenance and stuff kind of ourselves on that auto injector. You're going to see it's not very hard to do at all. Uh, next are the sample vials, right? I told you that we order 40 mil vials. These vials can uh, come in different sizes. Uh, the other common size is going to be a 9 milli a milliliter instead of a 40 milliliter. And again, uh, you know, that just really depends on the laboratory and it depends on the method. But 40 is going to be kind of the go-to volume almost every single time when it comes to the TOC instrument. Uh, so uh, these uh, can also come in 25 milliliters as well. But once again, 40 is going to be what we use most of the time. Up here at the top, this is a screw cap that's on top of the vial. And there's a piece of rubber septum. Now, I'm, I'll call it rubber, but it's probably not really rubber, rubber, okay? Uh, but this is a uh, inert uh, material that does not react with any kind of acid or base or what you would normally find in a sample that needs to be ran on TOC. And this is a cap or a seal onto the vial. So that way your sample, if it's a liquid, cannot escape out of the vial, all right? Of course, I mean, that's why we put a lid on it. The purpose of this piece of septa though, septum, is that there is a needle that will eventually puncture that lid and come down on the inside of this vial and start sucking up sample so that way it can present it to the TOC instrument. That has to be punctured, all right? So if I do a solid cap on these, it cannot go through that solid cap, of course. I'm going to bend the needle and I'm going to destroy it. So it has to be something that is very flexible. It has to be something that can be punctured. And then when this needle is removed, it has to be able to kind of seal itself back a little bit, right? And that's the purpose of the septum. So make sure that you are putting the proper caps onto the TOC vials. That is how they're made. They typically come together in a set. And if I was working in a laboratory, this is a one shot and that's it. So what would happen is that I would use this container one time 
and after that I would trash the container and the sample on the inside unless I have to store it for another reason. However, us, we like to reuse things. We like to save some money. Uh, now, these are not expensive. Uh, a case of 72 of these will cost about $55. So no big deal, right? If we do throw them away, it's one of the probably cheaper things in the laboratory that I could order. Uh, so they're not going to be terribly expensive, uh, but it is still something that we do to try to save money and to save waste in our laboratory. Uh, as far as the auto sampler goes, here's the auto sampler with the lid off. So normally what happens here is that I would take this lid off, right? So that way I would have access to the vials on the inside or I could load my vials up. This tray that you're seeing the vials inside of, that tray can be lifted up and it can be removed. So that way you can take it to a different area of the lab and you can load all of your samples up at that particular time and then bring it back to the auto sampler when you get finished with it. So that is the normal operation of that instrument. It is removable. So that tray can be slightly lifted up and out. Take it to where you need to take it, load up your samples, and then bring that tray back and kind of slot it in and set it down and you'll be okay. This area up here at the top, uh, this window or this shield that you're seeing in the gray area, that will actually open up. You can kind of see the hinges right here to the side. So this can open up and behind that shield you're going to see a needle. And that is the needle that will puncture the septa of the vial or the container, and that will suck up the sample and deliver it to the TOC instrument. Now, this needle is not going to last forever. So this needle can be replaced, and this can be replaced easily. You do not need to call someone to come and do it for you. The only thing that you have to do is just order a new one and then have it shipped, and then you can simply change this needle on your own. Uh, it's very easy to do. The only thing that you have to do, like right here's the needle, right? So this big stainless steel kind of rod that goes down, all right? Only thing that you have to do is that there is a nozzle or a knob that's right here. You just unscrew it. That's all that you have to do. And then you'll pull this needle out. And then you'll put the new needle in and you'll screw it and tighten it back. That's all that you have to do here folks it's it so do not call someone to come and do this for you it's something that any laboratory worker including yourself can do uh, this tubing that you're seeing over here to the right hand side that piece of tubing is going to lead to the TOC instrument so you can actually follow it right if this is my needle that punctures the sample container my liquid gets sucked up through the needle and it goes into the tubing and it goes into my instrument uh, to be analyzed. So that is the piece of tubing that leads from the needle. That tubing can also collapse. And if that tubing collapses, again, it's very easy. You'll order that tubing, you'll snip it in order to cut it to size in a way, and this gets screwed on there at the top, and it also gets screwed on to the instrument at the other end. So again, very easy to do very simple. The only thing that you need is a couple of snips and to reattach it. That's it folks. That's all there is to it. So again, a piece of maintenance that you can do on your own without a problem. The entire needle can be removed. So when I told you that you unscrew this up here at the very top, it's actually the needle and it's actually the holder or the mounting bracket that gets attached up there at the top as well. So that whole thing actually will come off for you. So that way you can take the needle out and then put the new needle in. Uh, these needles, they're not cheap. They're about $300 a piece. And that really is going to be determinant on the types of samples that you're running. If you're just running drinking water, then these needles are going to last for a very long time. But if you are analyzing other things than drinking water, like those acids, like if I was working for those chemical industries, right? Or if I was working for a pharmaceutical company, that should be very clean water. So these needles should last a very long time for me, right? But if I was working in the chemical industry, 
and I'm bringing acids and bases and kind of sludgy type of material, this is where the problem starts to happen. So those needles, $300 a pop. And it might not be uncommon for you to change those needles out once every month or once every two weeks, depending on what types of samples they're analyzing. If you take a closer look at the mounting bracket, this is what this thing looks like. And you can see the needle that's right here. And that needle can actually be slid out of that holder. Uh, you just kind of uh, simply unscrew. You can kind of see where that screw was right there. You just kind of unscrew that out, pull it off, and this will give you access to the needle. Uh, so that way you can quickly slide it out and slide the new one back in. And then finally, all of those pieces just get screwed back together and mounted back onto the auto injector. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is going to be just uh, not a very good video, but it's at least a little bit of motion. So that way you can see how this needle is taken off and how to replace the needle and put it back on. So I'm just going to hit the play button for you. Uh, this actually came from Shimatsu. So we had access to a little bit of the maintenance. So there's the door opening up. We're going to zoom in a little bit on the needle. You're going to see them unscrew that tubing at the top. They're unscrewing the screw here in the front or the side pocket. The whole mounting bracket and the needle goes out on its own. And then here they're going to unscrew that piece so you can slide the needle out. And then you'll have a new needle that you'll slide back into that position, tighten everything back. And then this entire mounting bracket and the needle, the new needle at least, will go back on the inside and it will mount right up there at the top where it was. And then the tubing gets attached, reattached there at the last. All right. So that's all there is to changing out a needle on the auto injector for the TOC instrument. That's all that you got to do. So don't pay Shimatsu to come down. Don't pay someone to come and do this for you. Uh, because this is something that will require just a couple of minutes of your time. And that is it, folks. That's all that you have to worry about. Uh, there are uh, people in a laboratory that will do this kind of stuff for you. And those people are called metrologists. All right. They do not classify the weather or they do not tell you the weather. So a metrologist is a person that works for a laboratory and the only thing that they do is go around and do maintenance on equipment. They help install new equipment. They help exchange new pieces and new parts on equipment. So that way the analyst can continue to process samples and load samples up. And someone else can kind of take over as far as the equipment goes to make sure the equipment is working the proper way. Maybe go through some quality checks of that equipment. Uh, you know, simple replacement pieces and parts and then verifying it out. Uh, that would be the purpose of a metrologist. So those labs are also going to be available to you um, as uh, when you graduate. Another thing I want to talk about as far as the auto injector goes. Okay, so here I'm going to show you the image again. On the back side of this, on the back side, there's going to be a plate and that plate can be removed. And there's another piece back there that you can also do some maintenance on. All right, so this plate, you're going to see three screws here on the back side of that auto injector. That can be unscrewed off, okay? And what you're going to find back there is this pump, okay? The purpose of that pump is to really suck up sample from those sample vials or containers and pump it into the instrument. And over time, this piece can go bad as well. Now, hopefully this is something that you never really have to replace and that it will last a very long time for you. But if that pump head begins to malfunction, this is another piece that can also be replaced quite easily. So uh, that's the purpose of the pump head. If it goes out, the auto injector cannot do its job. It cannot suck sample up and send it to the instrument. That's just the way that it is. So it's going to be very easy here to take off the entire pump and replace the entire pump back brand new all right it's also not terribly expensive believe it or not so i was actually surprised when i saw the price tag of these things so here's the pump the only thing that they did was unscrew that center screw and kind of slid this pump off and then what they'll do is that they will detach this tubing 
to the um, main line that goes from the auto injector to the TOC instrument. And uh, they will put the new pump back on and then reattach the lines uh, to that pump head. All right. Uh, so th to deattach them, you see those metal brackets right there uh, or clamps. The only thing that you have to do is just squeeze those metal clamps and that will release that tubing. So that way this whole thing can be taken off and you can bring the new one back. Uh, these things typically cost around $80 a piece. If they do go out, again, it's not one of those expensive maintenance items that you have to worry about. 80 bucks will give you a new pump head. That pump head, again, is what sucks the sample up and sends it to the TOC instrument. Uh, and it also allows the instrument to rinse itself. So meaning it's going to suck up water as well. So that water will go into the auto injector and it will help rinse out everything on the inside of that auto injector. And it can dispose of that rinse water. So it helps keep everything completely clean. Uh, there's another video too. I'll pull that one up as well. So that way you can see this pump head getting changed out. All right, so there's the pump head that you're seeing on your screen. They're going to unscrew those three screws and take this plate off. So that way you'll have access to that pump head. And there it goes. It just slides right off of there. Uh, here you'll see the pump head and the center screw there in the middle. So they will just go through and take that off. And then they'll unclip the tubing lines. Out goes the old. And in comes the new. So they'll reattach the tubing lines with the metal clips again. They'll slide the pump head back onto the holder. And then they'll put the metal faceplate back on to the auto injector. So that's all that you got to do right? And those are the two major pieces of the auto sampler that you would want to concern yourself with as a user of that TOC instrument, okay? Uh, so there's your uh, lesson for the auto sampler. Uh, I also talked about the rinse water. I said that this pump will also pull in some water to help rinse everything out. You're going to see a uh, bottle with a lid that has a piece of tubing going down inside of it. It looks like this to the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. That bottle is going to be filled with deionized water or distilled water. And the auto sampler will use this water for the rinsing and all of the procedures that's needed um, to keep it clean and to send it into the machine. All right. Uh, this is typically held in the back of the auto sampler. And here you'll see a picture of the TOC instrument again. To the left, you'll see the auto injector, and you can kind of see that bottle over here to the left-hand side. That's why I picked this picture. You can kind of see it right there, okay? So there's the DI rinse bottle. So it's very important that this bottle is filled with water all the time, and you also want to keep it fresh, okay? Uh, DI water and distilled water can be like any other water. Over time, a little bit of sludge or slimy stuff can get built up, into that bottle and you want to make sure that that stays clean so none of that gets sucked up into the instrument because then you're going to have a bigger problem on your hands. So what I normally tell people to do is, listen, it's DI water. So every day, every day, just take that off, unscrew the lid and take that bottle over to the sink, dump it all out, give it a few sprays with DI water, give it a good shake and then just rinse it out. No soap required. Right, Just give it a good rinsing with DI or distilled water, shake the tub up a couple of times, dump it out, and then put fresh water on the inside. That's all that you have to do to keep it clean. So do it every day. It's just going to take a few minutes of your time, and that few minutes every day could save you a ton of headache later down the future if you don't clean it out and that sludge and nasty buildup gets on the inside of it and it clogs up all of your tubing and all of a sudden your needle, which is $300, is now affected. All the tubing has to be replaced. The pump head could go bad. You name it, this thing could be a disaster. So keep fresh water in the bottle at all times, folks. Again, that's something that you want to do every day before you start this machine up or at least on a consistent basis. Okay, so now that's where this video is going to stop. 
and we're going to keep moving on to different pieces of the TOC instrument. And you're going to start to see this image quite a bit. And this image is what I'm going to refer to on the TOC over and over and over. And all of this are pieces and parts inside of the TOC analyzer. So I've talked about the auto injector and I kind of done it separately. And the auto injector is not on this schematic. It's not on the diagram. Okay. So the auto injector, it, it simply injects samples. That's it. There's a needle involved. There's a pump head involved on the back. There's a piece of tubing that goes from the needle to the instrument. That's all there is to it. But the TOC instrument is where the magic begins to happen. And here are all the pieces and parts that make this thing work. So we're going to walk through the majority of these pieces and parts and talk about why they're there and maybe how to do some maintenance on them, how much they cost, what's the purpose of them, and why do I need them, right? So that's what we're going to start doing in the next video. So we're going to focus on the incoming entry door first to the TOC instrument. And that's up here at the very top. And we're going to focus in on this area right there. So stay tuned. Come back. Take some notes. Pieces and parts and schematics. This is kind of all what you've been waiting for. But this is really what sets our program apart, right? It's about the equipment. What's the equipment doing? Why do I need to use the equipment? What type of samples can we run on the equipment? And here you go.